So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here, and this is another video of day to day around the house. In this video, I'm gonna go over some issues that you can have with a garbage disposal. One is if it locks up, what you can do to dislodge it. The other is mine developed a massive leak from the casing and I had to replace it. So I'm gonna go over the removal and installation of my new garbage disposal. And as with all my videos, guys, I try and give you the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your time. So if you enjoy this video and it gives you some good information, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it. So the first thing I'm gonna go over is what to do if your garbage disposal gets locked up, like right here. So on my old garbage disposal, it actually came with a Allen wrench and underneath your garbage disposal is a slot for that wrench and all you do is put it in there and you can manually override and turn the garbage disposal to loosen it up. Now I've had to do this a handful of times and it's always worked well. Now this is one thing about our new garbage disposal, it does not have that option. In order to clear out the new one, if it gets stuck, they recommend taking the splash guard out and sticking a wooden broom handle down inside it to dislodge it. Needless to say, I think the Allen wrench is a little quicker and easier and it might be different depending on the garbage disposal you have as well. Some garbage disposals might also have a safety reset if it is locked up and gets overheated. So all you need to do once you clear it and get it moving again is hit that reset button and try it again. If it still does not turn on, make sure you have power at the outlet. Now your dishwasher is probably plugged into the same outlet as your garbage disposal. If not, you could always unplug the garbage disposal and put something you know works in that spot, turn on the switch and make sure that house appliance works. If whatever you plugged in still does not get power, then you need to go check your circuit breakers. As far as the reason I had to replace mine, whenever I turn it on, I'd get this massive water leak, which by the way is not safe considering water and electricity don't mix well. Plus I didn't want to destroy my cabinetry under the sink. So if you end up having to do a garbage disposal, I saw them on Amazon from anywhere from as low as $40 to up to 300, give or take a little bit. And I've heard that if you call a residential plumbing company, you're looking around six to $800 to do the replacement. This is not that bad of a project to do yourself. And keep in mind that depending on the brand or model you end up getting, it could be a little different, but for the most part, it is gonna be the same general concept. So let's get to it. So step one is gonna to be to unplug that garbage disposal for safety reasons. So we remove the P-trap. Now when this plumbing is plastic, usually you can just break them loose by hand. If not, you can get a pair of channel locks. You will definitely need those channel locks if you have metal piping under your sink. And do yourself a favor and make sure you have a container to catch all the nasty water coming out of this thing or any part of this project for that matter. Then I went ahead and removed the 90 degree elbow and then using a flathead screwdriver, I removed the pipe going into the garbage disposal itself. After that, I removed the hose coming from the dishwasher drain and that was just a hose clamp using a screwdriver as well. Then I removed the three bolts that were holding the garbage disposal to the sink drain itself using a socket and a ratchet. Now, depending on the garbage disposal you have, this could be a little different. Once getting all three of those bolts off, then I had to use a hammer to tap on the lower threaded piece that was on the garbage disposal itself to break it free from the piece that was on the drain. So if your new garbage disposal is the exact same design as your old one, you wanna be more careful than I am right here to not move the sink drain. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to reseal the drain before putting the new garbage disposal back on. Once knocking it loose, I continued to unthread it by hand until it got to the point where it released the garbage disposal and I was able to drop it out. After removing the garbage disposal, you're gonna to need to take the sink drain out unless it is the same design as the one you're putting back on or if it shifted or moved during the removal of the old garbage disposal because then it probably won't seal when you go to put it back together. Now, once again, depending on the style of sink drain or garbage disposal you had, this could be a little different, but no matter what, you're gonna have some type of retaining ring or rubber seal or something that you're gonna have to remove so you can pull the sink drain up out of the sink. 
On this one, there was a little metal ring that I had to use a screwdriver to pry off of the bottom of the drain, then remove the two flanges and the gasket. After getting those off, the sink drain pushed right up out of the sink. And that's all there is to removing the old garbage disposal. Then using some paper towels, I cleaned up the surface on the sink to remove the old plumber's putty. Then I grabbed the new sink drain and disassembled it. It usually is gonna come assembled so you can see how it comes apart and goes back together. So I took it off piece by piece and set it on the counter in the order it came apart, noticing the orientation of each piece as well. Then using some silicone, I put a light bead around the threads and the rubber seal that was on the drain, even though it said it was not needed for a stainless steel sink. I'd rather be safe than sorry on this aspect of it. And placed the drain in the sink to make sure it was centered and just gave it a little force to push it down into place. Then went under the sink and put the gasket and the nut on the bottom of the sink drain. I tightened it all the way by hand and then gave it a little bit of extra with an oil filter wrench. You can also use a pair of channel locks obviously to do this, but this oil filter wrench comes in handy for all kinds of projects and about the last thing I use it on is changing an oil filter. So I tend not to read the instructions and once again it kind of bit me in the In the instructions it recommended putting this rubber seal on the drain a couple times before doing it under the sink. I disregarded that advice and just tried doing it under the sink and I fought it more so probably than if I would have practiced a couple times. So basically for this design there is a groove on the seal that has to line up with a groove on the drain. And the only thing that made it a pain is the fact that you have to hold that locking nut up above it while trying to get that seal in place correctly. If I install another garbage disposal that's this design, I think I'll put a little bit of oil or maybe some petroleum jelly on the inside of that seal because I think that would make that seal slip up into that groove on that drain a little easier. After getting it up there, I just felt around it to make sure it felt equal all the way around. So as with all my videos, guys, I tell you the dumb things I do, so hopefully you don't make the same mistakes. This time, I actually did not read the instructions, and there was an external plug on the dishwasher drain. So I just pulled that off and hooked the dishwasher up to that, and it backed up my dishwasher the first time I ran a load because there is an internal plug that needs to be punched out. So don't forget to do that. I just used a large wooden dowel and a hammer. Make sure you check your instruction manual on that aspect because it might be different depending on brand or model. Then you have to lift the garbage disposal up against the drain, time that locking ring to get it started. Now I only tighten down that locking ring just barely enough to hold the garbage disposal in place at first so I could rotate the garbage disposal to make sure my drain tube was going to line up with the plumbing coming out of the wall. I did struggle with this process a little bit, trying to hold the garbage disposal up with one hand and just tighten that locking ring down with the other because that garbage disposal is a little heavy and the awkwardness of being under the sink. And it did take some effort to get that locking ring to turn a little bit to start it. Once the garbage disposal was held up in place, I installed the drain tube going into the side of the garbage disposal and tightened down the two screws that held that. So the garbage disposal did come with a new drain tube. However, I had to reuse the old one because of the way the tubing was going into the wall. But the seal surface was the same and I was able to reuse it, but it might just be a good idea to check to make sure that is the case with yours as well. Then I put the drain on for the dishwasher and tighten that hose clamp down. After that, I went ahead and put the 90 degree elbow connecting the drain to the P-trap and loosely tighten those fittings. Then I put the P-trap on. You'll notice how I rotated the garbage disposal because it's not tight yet. So I could line those up and start those plastic nuts as well. The ceiling surfaces between all these joints are a tapered fit. So you do not have to use plumber's tape or anything like that. And they are reusable. So I got all of the plastic nuts started on the piping. Then I made sure I was happy with the location of the garbage disposal. And then I went ahead and snugged all those fittings down by hand. If for whatever reason, when you go to hook all your piping back up, it's not working out because the garbage disposal drain is at a different height than the last one. I've never had this happen to me with the ones that I have done. 
But if it does happen to you, you can modify this tube because the seal on it is adjustable. The P-trap also has some adjustability to it. If you need it longer, you can just go buy that piece at a hardware store. And if side to side is off a little bit, you just shift the P-trap, so that's usually not a problem. Now all that's left is to finish tightening that cam nut on the garbage disposal. I did as much as I could by hand, and then I used that oil filter wrench to tighten it down the rest of the way. So here's a good look at that cam nut and how that works. You can see the plastic tab on that garbage disposal has to get up on that shelf to make sure it is tightened down all the way. And that's about it, guys. The only thing left is to go ahead and plug your garbage disposal in and turn it on and make sure it works. One other thing, guys, whenever dealing with power cords and water, you always want to make sure there is a drip loop. Basically, a low spot in the cord so the water drains off of that drip loop and not back into the outlet. Now, the other thing I was not particularly too fond of with this garbage disposal, that it did not come with a splash guard. Now, I did find one on Amazon, so it's not that big of a deal. We're going to order one up, but I was surprised this one didn't come with it. And that's going to wrap it up, guys. Once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some good information. If so, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it, and I hope to see you next time. Later.